and I left Abernade School, and my first trip to was uh, to feed the cattle. Uh, I was made cattleman, uh, and to feed the cattle in the reeds, you know, and break the turnips with own hashing machine, <laughs> and, and, and fill the troughs, and then give them hay and straw up in the, the hake. Yeah, that, that was my first job at, over at Mullaline. Yes, aye. Uh, well, I I would go for a start for a good head and character, and, and that's a thing that you can't describe to anybody. Got a good long wide top, wide deep backside, and strong legs. The bigger the better, as long as it's not too big and clumsy. They're decent size, a beast, and as I said, strong legs. If you're going to have a big beast, you must have legs to carry. I thought to be about it. And that's the sort of cattle that the late Duncan Stewart was shouting about 50 years ago. Under it, late Bertie Marshall could stand rod. And as Lord Lovett said to me, he says there were voices in the wilderness nobody listened to. And they were in a long dead when the cycle just turned round and that's what they were after. Trying to get new what they lodged with. And they'll never get it. You could go too big and high, and would better are the Berlin Army, it's the same thing. <laughs> now, they're trying to get the very thing that was spoken about all the best of 50 years ago, and since then, the, there's a chap, Jimmy Jordan, he was the secretary of the Army Society, and I put on the radio, mind you, used to get fair news at dinner time, and he come on, he was just home to the Argentine, and he nearly told them word for word what I said. I met him in Perth one day and I turned it over. I was just right off the cuff. I always mind uh, my father buying a, a heifer at the market. I was only a boy. And uh, the man that was selling it to my father says to him, How is she milking? Oh, he says, you'll get tired milking her, well, you'll get tired milking her. So, when my father went home and milked her for a day or two, he, he met him in the market the next week, he says, you're quite right, he says, I did get tired milk her, she was that true. He thought, my father thought she was giving that much milk, he would uh, get tired milk her, but she was that true, he was right enough, he, he could hardly get the milk off her. <laughs> The tradition has it, and I'm sure it'll be quite correct, that the cattle come down the small glen and down the Highland and Lone and right through to the Falkirk Tice. The, the, creep, the fairs and creep when they were um, sold, but that was, I think, mainly a, a passing on, a stopping place and a banging place where the Highlanders brought down the cattle the length of creep and they sold them. And they, they, you know, you have the wide streets like. Bill Street and Commissioner Street, where those lots of cattle were all parked out in different different lots, same as they do in Ireland, even I think to this day. You know, the, there was no pens as such. I thought there was a market park where they put some of them, but uh, a lot of them were just held in the, the streets and they were sold by other people who then took them on to Falkirk and from there, right down, I believe, at land of Smithfield. Now the you see, there was, there was, of course, there's ever so many rough roads over the Ohos. There's one in particular that uh, had been a very busy one at one time through Glendevin, which they used from the Trice at Creef over through Glendevin and on to the Falkirk Trice, because the, 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 the Trice at Creef was held a week or two before the Trice at Falkirk. And these Trice you see, there were these were the two big trysts in Scotland in that that area, the mid centre central Scotland. But there was trysts all over the Highlands and the northeast of Scotland and down in the southwest as well. A trist, of course, was just a cattle fair. But lads, the clocks they be crow, but I burn with you. The burns may run say box day brave for I am but a plume and 
ಗುರುವಾಡಿ ಅಂದಬೋಂತೆ ದೇ